You okay there? It's Tim G5TM back for another one. Now I've been looking at alternative uh, options for working portable and uh, one of the uh, things I've come up with and tested out at home is a uh, sort of non-resident vertical fed with a 9 to 1 unun and uh, with a tuner involved as well. Uh, the antenna I've uh, been looking at is something I've been considering for a while to operate, uh, well it's designed to operate anyway on the higher HF bands that's uh, 20 through 10 meters. So I had certain aims for this antenna. Now the four main aims I had was for it to be quick to deploy. So I didn't want to be resting with lots of wires. So a quick to deploy, maximum 10 minutes to take up, five minutes to put down. Uh, be able to use a lightweight seven meter fiberglass pole so I can carry the pole with me to be able to do that quite easily. Uh, so I'm not to carry around a, a heavy sort of spider beam pole or anything like that. Uh, I want to use 20, 17, 15, 12 and 10 metres of little or no physical change to the antenna. So I don't want to be adjusting coils too much. I just want to be able to literally change bands. And what I want to have is decent low angle radiation to maximise the proximity to salt water. Because as we know, the verticals work well near salt water when you've got that lovely ground plane to play with. So uh, a vertical... Uh, near salt water is something I've been looking to try for quite some time. Now, as we all know as well, uh, when we're looking to use, say, just a single vertical element, which is what this will be, um, we need to make sure that we have a, a length of the vertical, which allows us to maximise our takeoff angle on a variety of different bands. If we make this vertical too long, we start to see higher lobes and higher takeoff angles or greater gain on those higher takeoff angles compared to what we want the DX to come in, which is around five or 10 degrees off the horizon. This is why it's important to look at the, the length of the vertical as well. So with that in mind, the other important considerations are to keep the antenna length somewhere between 17 and 27 feet long. That's 5.2 to 8.2 meters. And this is because once the vertical becomes greater than a three quarter wavelength long in length, then gain increases at higher angles and diminishes at lower angles. So what we're keeping our eye on here really is the 10 meter band. Now a three quarter wavelength long for 10 meters is going to be around 25 feet, which is about seven to 7.5 meters. So we don't really go much longer than that in terms of the length of the vertical because we're starting then to diminish our low angle DX performance on 10 meters. So the length I chose in this case it was about 6.4 meters long, which I think in Imperial was at something around 21 feet or something like that in length. And that'll fit quite nicely on the seven meter pole, but also give us a sort of non-resonant length, which will still allow us to hopefully maximize some decent performance on the very higher bands, i.e. 10 and 12 meters. So the antenna then is configured in the following way. 6.4 meter vertical wire fed very near the ground, within sort of 50 centimeters of the ground. That's within two feet. I'll be using, just in this situation, four five meter radials, five meter long radials, which will be attached to the ground side of the nine to one unun. I'll be using seven meters of Hyperflex 10 coax from the nine to one unun to a line isolator, which is basically a choke, which then goes directly into the ATU, which is the LDG RT100 remote ATU. And then from the ATU, I run about four meters of RG58 coax uh, into the transceiver. Um, so there we go. That's the basic setup. Now, as you can see here, the antenna itself on the left, you've got how it's set up at home. Very simple. And there on the right, you've got the, the feed point there with the nine to one and then you can see the, the four radials uh, going off on the, on, the, on the lower part and at the top part, the hot side, that's where the, uh, the vertical element goes up the, towards the top of the seven meter fiberglass pole. And there we have the, uh, the tuner. You can see there at the bottom of the picture, the line isolator going into the tuner with a double PL259 connector. On the top, you've got the coax going from the tuner then into the shack, into the, into the ICOM uh, 7300. So uh, let's see then what the measurements were at the feed point. Now, an important consideration I haven't covered yet, which is pretty important, is the feed line loss. Now, you want to keep the feed line loss as low as possible. In my case, I'm going to keep the loss on the coax down to certainly less than a dB and as close to half a dB as I possibly can. There will be additional insertion loss as well with the 9 to 1 unun and with the tuner. But I wouldn't have thought that both of those would come to much more than a dB combined. So 
If I can keep the feed line loss itself at sort of less than a dB, or certainly as close to half a dB as I can as possible, then an overall system loss of about 1.5 dB, I think, is a fair trade-off for the convenience of using these five bands without having to really adjust anything. Let's have a look then. What I did, I put the um, I put the analyzer directly into the nine to one onion uh, using a double PL two five nine. So we're measuring the impedance, the SWR, right at the feed point. So we then know what sort of mismatch we have going from there into the tuner, and we're able to calculate the loss on that feed that feed line from the nine to one into the tuner. In that on that hyperflex 10 coax to see what our sort of attenuation and our loss is like across the different bands let's have a look then at 2017 15 12 and 10 meters in terms of the likely feed line loss so looking at 20 meters first of all then now uh, before we look at the feed line loss we've got two pictures there really on the left hand side we've got the uh the far field plot and you can see there that basically we've got decent uh, gain we're looking at five degrees off the horizon by the way as a sort of benchmark here Minus 6.1 dB, pretty typical for a quarter wave ground mounted vertical, really. On the right, you can see at the feed point, we've got an SWR of 3 to 1. So that 9 to 1 and then bring it uh, down or up or whatever it's doing to 3 to 1. And a 3 to 1 SWR at the feed point, given the length of coax we're using to the tuner, means we've got a feed line loss before the ATU of 0.16 dB. Very, very manageable. 70 meters is pretty similar. Again, on the left, you can see we've now got a slight increase in gain on that left-hand picture of minus 5.9 dB. Again, pretty much similar to a quarter wave ground mounted vertical. Uh, we've got SWR 4.3 to 1 with a slightly higher band, so the loss has gone up a little bit. Feed line loss 0.26 dB before the ATU, but again, very, very manageable. And moving on to 15 meters, and you can see on the left-hand side, we've got a slight increase in gain now. Uh, minus 5.4 dB, but again, pretty typical of a, a ground mounted quarter wave. Our uh, SWR, a bit higher, just a shade under 7 to 1 at the feed point, but again, using a fairly chunky coax, not a big run, only 7 metres, of course, of Hyperflex 10 going into that tuner, means we're still keeping feed line losses at about 0.43 dB. So again, that's fairly acceptable. At 12 metres, we're seeing a little bit more gain, minus 4.2 dB. And on the right hand side, seven that's at five degrees off the horizon, of course. And on the right hand side, we've got a 7.3 to 1 SWR feed line loss before the ATU, a fraction and a half a dB. I'm happy with that. If we look at 10 meters on that left hand side, we've got a very nice pattern developing there, akin to I think a 5 8 wave. This is 6.4 meters long, of course, that's basically 5 8 wave territory on 10 meters. So we've got minus 2.6 dB, and that's basically 3 dB better than the 20, 17, and 15 meters with this antenna. So that's pretty nice. The SWR is 7.8 to 1 right at the feed point. So we've now got a feed line loss of 0.56 dB. I'm okay with that. I'd like it to be maybe a fraction lower, but we're only talking, you know, we're talking a, a quarter of a dB here and there. So to be honest with you, 0.56 dB, half a dB, I'm okay with that. And good news, the antenna tunes pretty well. So we've got 20 meters using the ICOM 7300. Uh, we can see that when we then uh, get the, uh, the tuner to do its thing, uh, remotely we've got a decent SWR, flat SWR across 20 meters. On 17 meters we're well under 1.5 to 1 throughout the band so that's very very uh, acceptable of course. 15 meters uh, yeah that's fine again very very acceptable across the band. 12 meters very narrow band uh, we've gone from about 1.1 to 1.5 to 1 uh, from the bottom to top edge again I'm okay with that. 10 meters um, yeah, not bad. A um, bit more of a challenging tune there, but again, you can see we're below 1.5 to 1 for 300 kilohertz. I'm okay with that, and again, that's perfectly usable throughout the, the phone band. You'll need to uh, to basically move it down a bit and, and retune again to get it onto FT8 as well, or up if uh, FM is your thing. And what's interesting is we've actually we actually had a decent tune on 40 meters. Now you know 6.4 meters is a wee bit short for 40 meters, but hey ho. Uh, it's you know it's uh, it gets me a tune got me on the band um, and you can see there we've got uh, about 100 kilohertz at uh, less than 1.5 to 1 so uh, certainly for us folk in, in Europe the UK when we're using uh, 40 meters for phone SSB then if we're under 1.5 to 1 from 7.1 to 7.2 then um, we can't complain I'm not saying it'll be the best radiator in the world on 40 meters but 
Bit of a bonus band there. When I tried the antenna out, typically band conditions weren't brilliant. There was a geomagnetic storm going on. And as you can see, the noise levels were very, very high, especially when I was only able to operate actually on 20 meters. The higher bands were pretty much shut, but um, a higher noise floor than usual on 20 meters. But I made a couple of contacts. Now, Tango Mike. Thank you. Golf 5, Tango Mike. Golf 5, Tango Mike, 5-9. Five, 5-9 nine. Five, nine 20, name is Tim. Tango, India, Mike, QSL. Germany 5, Tango Mike. Germany 5, Tango Mexico, 15 dB over, very strong. So overall, am I happy with this design of antenna? Yeah, I think I am. I don't think it's one of those antennas you would... I mean, you, you can throw it up and, and use it and pack it down quickly. You can do it like that. It might even be better suited as sort of a campsite antenna when you're parked up for maybe two or three nights somewhere and you're just using a campsite. But you can throw it up pretty quickly. We're only talking about one vertical element, a few, literally a four uh, ground radials. And I suspect the antenna, by the way, will, will improve in terms of performance of a lot more radials. But you can throw those down and get it on, on the air pretty quickly. Um, so the antenna is pretty quick to deploy. I've got a tune on, on the five bands I wanted to work on. The feed line loss is acceptable. There's always a compromise there. Got a nice pattern on 10 meters especially, so I'm quite happy with that. So overall, yes, you've got to have a tuner in line, so that's a bit of extra equipment that you'll need. But overall, is it an option to take portable? Yeah, it is. And I think it's something to try out, and I will be trying that out. It's on my long list of antennas to try portable over the next uh, couple of months with the summer weather here now in the UK. Well, thanks for watching, and if you would like to click subscribe, that would be wonderful. There'll be another video coming up over here, uh, but all the best to you. Take care and enjoy your portable activation too. And by the way, if you want to add any comments uh, down below about the 9 to 1 and your experience of using these sorts of antennas, I'd be interested to hear it. All the best and take care. Bye-bye.